السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, I am Ikram Haq and on my right is brother Rodwan Hasni uh, he is our uh, scorekeeper for the night and to my left is my long time quiz collaborator Dr. Sayyid Salahuddin Ahmed uh, <clears throat> Welcome to yet another episode of Ramadan quiz, epic Ramadan uh, quiz, and it is truly epic. As you know, many things, anything epic. Uh, we thank their teams for their participation, and we would like to go over some housekeeping rules so that we abide by them in order to finish our program uh, on time before we cut into the khatra, which starts at 2.45. So we ask for your indulgence and also for your cooperation. Uh, because there are so many of you here tonight, if you keep talking among yourselves, we will have a cacophony of voices. So we want your attention and your cooperation. Uh, here are the quiz rules. And we would like to everyone uh, to take these rules seriously. Uh, participants will deposit their cell phones uh, in a basket that has been provided to you. And I see that you have already put your cell phones there, but some have not. I would like the basket to be placed on the floor rather than on your table. So please go ahead and do it right now. Each team will select a lead person who will consult among themselves and then provide us the answer on behalf of your team. Uh, teams will have this is very important, critical, 30 seconds to answer the question. 30 seconds. Teams will not seek external help. Each correct answer will be 10 points. OK, guys, hello, assalamu alaikum. The only people you will be talking to is us, not among yourself, not at least not right now. When it's time for you to answer questions, then you consult among yourself. Um, if a team answers incorrectly or does not answer, we will move to the next team with a different question, and we will provide you the answer. There will be no negative marking. We will award five points for partially correct answers. We will award full 10 points for mostly correct answers. If a team disagrees with our decision and presents evidence to support their answer, us, the three of us, will look into uh, their evidence and, inshallah, decide accordingly. We expect to have nine rounds, probably not. but probably not because we started late uh, and we don't want to hear complaints that people who come for prayer or uh, lecture uh, and we are still sitting here. So we may have to curtail the number of rounds in order to meet our own uh, obligation about time. And in case of a tie, which often happens, uh, we will ask tiebreaker questions. Is there any question at this point before we start? Any teams? Uh, so they, uh, not only that they cannot uh, look into their phones, uh, but also they cannot, you know, have a musaf with them to find the answer because this is the house of Allah and you're not doing this for money. You are here uh, because you have studied the Quran and the seerah and you are going to share your knowledge, collective knowledge with us, inshallah ta'ala. So with that, uh, let us begin. And in keeping with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu we will start with our right. Oh, it's okay. Just leave on the board. Just leave it as it is. Okay. So we will start with our right. And the first team that I see is uh, Hijabi Heroes. Brother Ikram, one housekeeping notice before we start. As, we, uh, as Brother Harris had announced beforehand, the maximum number of people on any team can be eight. I see a few teams that have a ninth or tenth person near that if there's anybody more than eight, they have to be totally away from the team. 
if we could please uh, have that before we start, inshallah. When you said totally away, how far away? They have At to least be? eight feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Uh, uh, there is a sister volunteer with a with the mic. Okay. So the first question will be to hijabi heroes. Bismillah. The question is, why do some scholars say reciting the Quran with tajweed is necessary? Because reading it without the tajweed has the potential to change the meaning of the ayah. Uh, we'll give you partial five points. Uh, the answer we are looking for, yes, it may change uh, the meaning in some cases, but because the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu with the ahkam uh, of Tajweed, uh, Jibreel Al -Islam also taught him how to recite the Quran and all the qiraat. Uh, we move on to the team uh, behind Sunna you, the Sunnah squad. Uh, the question is, is, state two of three verses that say when the Quran was revealed. Shahrul Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran and inna anzallahu fi laylat al-Qadr. That is a correct answer. <coughs> yep. Muflihat, the next question is to the team Muflihat, name the companion who led the Quran compilation during Abu Bakr's era and its writing in the Uthmani era. Zayd ibn Thabit. That is the correct answer. We, we move to fasting dudes. Uh, I hope they are not fasting right now. Uh, uh, okay, so the question to them is, why was a physical compilation of the Quran deemed necessary? Because um, during the battles after the, like during the battle, battle of Yamama, uh, many of the Hufal passed away and they need to preserve the Quran by physically putting it onto like a tablet or a leaf or whatever. And they want to keep it. Um, they want to. Comp they, they want to keep it in one version of the Mus'haf. Okay, we will accept uh, uh, the uh, answer. Uh, it was uh, because the Hufaz were dying in the Hurubur Ridda, the wars of apostasy that was happening. Okay, the next question is to the team behind you. And what is the name? Maqarrabin. The question is Muslim. Masses did not have access to a physical Quran, physical Mus'haf, until the Khilafa of this Sahabi. Who was he? Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala. That is the correct answer. Uh, the next question is to Tullabul Ilm. Name the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Name the companion the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked to recite the Quran to him. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. That is the correct answer. The team, Muhsineen. Which surah is called as Salah? And why? Yeah. Is that a question or is, it, is that an answer? No, no, that's the answer. Surah Fatiha. It's not it's Jeopardy. It's not Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, we are not following the Jeopardy. Uh, so that is an answer, correct? Yes. Okay, that is the correct answer. It is called a Salah because the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever did not recite Suratul Fatiha, 
the prayer is invalid. Okay, the next question is to Cole Brownies. <laughs> what are qira'at and how many are they according to ijma? So we only say ten qiraats, there are seven ahruf, and then after that, uh, after that, seven other qiraats. So the, the scholars added ten. Uh, I forgot which scholar, but it was ten because people were getting confused with the seven ahruf and the seven qiraats. So they made it ten. We are talking about ijma and qiraat, not ahruf. Yeah. You said qiraat. Yes. Oh, se seven qiraat. Okay, that is the correct answer. Okay. Uh, huh? And also, I'm sorry, uh, my mistake. Uh, the second part of the question was, what are qira'at? What is meant by it? I want to make sure that they understand. Yani, it was uh, like different dialects, the seven ahruf. Basically, the, all the qira'at, they were taken from the seven ahruf. From, from the original, like, okay. auto from the ahruf originally. So, and they Sorry, were, so I just wanted to make sure that you un understood the question, but that answer is incorrect. Ahruf and Qira'at are different. Uh, there were seven Ahruf, uh, but they are different from Qira'at, so we'll give you five marks because it's a two-part question. Muslimun, recite the ayah that says Allah himself will preserve the Qur'an. Ten. Ten seconds remaining. Inna nahnu nazzalna al-dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. That is the correct answer. Jazakallah khair. Okay, round two. Uh, we will come back to hijabi heroes. Surah Baqarah was revealed in Medina except for these verses. What are they? You can say the Arabic or you can tell us the, the verse numbers. Ten seconds. Um, ayahs 284 to 286 of Surah Baqarah. 284 to? 286, the, the last three ayahs. It's mostly correct. Uh, so it's the last two verses, 285 and 286. Uh, uh, this is mostly correct, so we'll give them 10 marks. Uh, the next team, what is the name? Sunnah Squad. Sunnah, Sunnah Squad. Squad. I, I'm sorry, I cannot see that sign from here. The question for you is, can you name four of the seven qira'at, four of the seven recitations that are known after? Warsh, Hafs, and Qalun. Sorry, could you say again? Warsh, Hafs, and Qalun. Warsh, Hafs, and Qalun. Uh, this, these are three. Any other? Okay, sorry, the time is over. Uh, but we'll give you full marks uh, because it is mostly correct. So there are others. 
Uh, no, at the, yes. at the beginning of the competition, we said if we, they get we explained that. more than half, uh, like three out of four or two yeah, out of then, three, then we're giving full credit. Yes, and please do not uh, disrupt <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you did not hear the housekeeping rules. So We're in a so giving so mood. It's Ibn Kasir, Asim, Hafsan and Asim, Abu Amr, Ibn Amir, Hamza, Nafi, etc., etc. Muflihat, the question for you is, according to scholars, Six companions received ijazah to recite the Quran directly from the Prophet wasallam. Name three of them. Abdullah bin Mas'ul, Abdullah bin Abbas. Zayd bin Thabit. They said two words. Okay, time is over. Yeah. And you said Abdullah ibn Abbas and Zayd ibn Thabit. And, and they said Abdullah ibn Mas'ud too. And you said Abdullah ibn Mas'ud as well. Uh, so two out of three. So two out of three. Yeah. We'll give you full marks. Okay, the next team is Fasting Dudes. <laughs> According to most scholars, what was the last verse of the Quran to be revealed? You can recite the Arabic or you can give us the verse number. Um, the verse is, That is the correct answer. <laughs> Muqarrabun, Muqarrabin, <laughs> the question for you is Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu uh, No, that is not the question. No, no, no. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, take or learn the Quran from four, mention at least two. Take or learn the Quran from these four, mention at least two. Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala. Ten seconds. No. Is that the final answer? No. Okay, so the time is up. I oh. uh, will give you five points. Uh, the others are uh, Salim, the freed slave of Abu Hazaifa, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, and Ubay bin Ka'ab radiallahu anhu. Yeah, Abdullah ibn Abbas was not correct. Abdullah ibn Abbas was not correct. He is a mufassir, but this, this, he is not among these that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Talab al-ilm, concerning the Qur'an's revelation, what is the difference between anzala and nazala? Seven seconds. And, and nazal means to reveal? Mm. Okay, so time is over. Both of them mean re reveal or revelation, but inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. All of the Quran revealed at one time. Nazala means the Quran came down in stages in, over a period of 23 years. Yeah, slowly. So no point. Uh, there is no point for you, unfortunately. Uh, we moved, uh, move on to Mahsineen. The next question is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in Saba'a Ahruf. What are Ahruf? What is meant by Ahruf? You can give the definition in English. Styles of recitation. 
Okay, is that the final That's answer? That's the final answer, yes. Final answer? Yes. Okay, we'll let's accept that. This is one of the meanings. So other meanings are uh, in, in mode, a dialect, etc. Cold, cold. Uh, cold brownies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to recite Surah al bayyana to this Sahabi. Who was it? Was recited to Abdullah bin Salam. No, no, Is that no, the no final laugh. Final answer? No, no, no laugh. No, it's not. Okay, the time is over. Uh, it was not Abdullah bin Salam. It was uh, Ubay bin Kaab for the Allah one. The question to uh, Muslimun. What was the occasion of the revelation of Surah Abduha? Surah Abduha. What was the occasion? When was it revealed? Why was it re revealed? A lady Sorry. accused the Prophet ﷺ after a long period of time of uh, a cease of revelation that his jinn abandoned him and that caused him to feel saddened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the surah to console the Prophet. ﷺ. Okay, yes. we will accept that answer. Jazakallah khair. All right. <laughs> All right. Moving along, this round is continuing to be kind of intermediate level of difficulty for the sisters. The, the sisters need more people to cheer from them, right? S sisters, you ready to cheer for them now? All right. So for Team Hijabi Heroes. What is the verse in which Allah uses two of his names or qualities, meaning Ra'uf and Rahim, to describe the Prophet So recite the verse from the Quran or at least provide the surah and ayah number. Ten seconds. No? Okay, that's all right. Yeah, so basically it's from Surah Tawbah, verse 123. That's the, that's the part we wanted. All right, thank you. Uh, next team, Sunnah Squad. Who are the Ashab al ukhdud that are mentioned in the Quran? Who are they? Can we have the timer on the board? Oh, it's not? Is the time, they're saying the time is not on? It's uh, 15 seconds. Six seconds. Uh, there were the ones, there were the people that were thrown in the fire after the king said that he is um, the Lord of everyone and after, when he would ask someone, who is your Lord? And if they said no, he would push them into the fire. Okay. That's one. But yeah, it was him as well as his group. So that is correct. Thanks. All right. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm the last. Some, some parody now, the intensity is picking up here, right? All right, so next team, Muflihat, right? According to Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, Allah permitted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to fight back through mentioning this verse. State part of the verse or its English translation. So basically, according to Ibn Abbas, permission was granted for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to fight back.
وقاتلوهم حتى لا تكون فتنة ويكون الدين لله فإن انتهوا فلا عدوان إلا على الظالمين uh, No, unfortunately that verse is not correct. That was a later verse. This is in chapter 2 verse 39. أذن للذين يقاتلون بأنهم ظلموا وإن الله على نصرهم لقدير So, sorry, this is uh, not the correct answer. Uh, next team, fasting dudes. You ready? All right. Uh, which surah of the Quran indirectly announced the coming death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Oh, just the surah name. Even easier. Yeah. Just the surah name. Eight seconds. All right, Surah Al-Nasr. That is correct. Yeah. All right. <laughs> good, good guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Next team, Muqarrabin. The companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Jubair bin Mut'im, radiAllahu an. Converted to Islam after listening to which surah? We just need the surah name. Eight seconds. Surah Taha. No, unfortunately, that is not correct. It's Surah at tur All right, all right. All right, Team Talab al Ilm. Where in the Quran has Prophet Muhammad been named Ahmad? Recite the verse in Arabic or the portion of the verse. It's in the verse of uh, Surah Al-Saf with Qala Isa ibn Maryama Ya Bani Israel inni Rasulullah ilaykum musaddiqan lima bayna yadayya min al-Tawrah min ba'di ismu Ahmad, right? Okay. Min ba'dihi, uh, min ba'dihi ismu Ahmad. Yeah. Unfortunately for the other teams, that is correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost got you there, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, cold brownies. Or oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, Mohsini. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> just skip that. All right. the, the Prophet Wasallam said, one who wants to know about the day of judgment as if he or she has seen it with his or her own eyes should read these three surahs. What are they? Nine seconds. Surah Al Qiyama. And what do you want me to say? What else? <laughs> Time's up. So uh, we'll just say Surah Al Qiyama. Um. <laughs> okay. No. Time's, no. Time's up. Uh, the correct answer is Surah Al Takwir, Surah Al Infitar, and Surah Al Inshikaq. So all from the 30th juz. All right. Cold brownies. You've been eating your brownies? All right. Ready? Okay. Who is the Quran referring to in the following verse? يَقُولُونَ لَإِن رَجَعَنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لِيُخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلْ Who is the Quran referring to? Can hear. Abdullah bin Abi Salul. Okay. Yeah, we'll take that. Is them as well as the other Munafiqun. Abdullah bin Ubay ibn Salul. Yes. 
That is correct. All right. Muslimun slash Muslimas, right? <laughs> okay. Which, which verse from the Quran proves that we cannot see Allah in this world? You can recite the portion of the verse or the English translation. Ten seconds. <coughs> okay. Um, إنه لا يدرك الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار. Say it, say it one more time. Sorry. أعوذ بالله من شيطان الرجيم. Go ahead, go ahead. You can guys, hear me? silence, silence. Sorry, guys, please, quiet. Um, that's the part of the ayah that's referring to with the, the question that you were referring to, so I went ahead and... <laughs> okay. I mean, it wasn't exactly correct, it was basically, basically yeah, it's basically. La that's what I said. Correct, right? <laughs> Close enough, yes, full marks. All right. All right, so alhamdulillah, we've completed three rounds. We're going to be switching gears to Sira questions. Let's give everybody a big round of applause before we go to the next round. Alhamdulillah. All right, moving along. Thanks for your cooperation, but everybody, if we could please have everybody quiet now during the questions. Moving to Sira for hijabi heroes. What is the theological or religious meaning of sira, the word sira in English? No. Nine seconds. Four seconds. Does it mean to travel? It, um, mm. it comes from the root um, seen ya ra. From the root what? We couldn't hear you. Seen ya ra. What did she say? say? I couldn't hear that last part. Say it again. You said travel and then what? Pass? Okay. Huh? I mean, uh, travel is partly correct, like, uh, because yasiru or sayr means to travel or go along a path, so we'll give you partial correct, but we had asked what is the theological or religious usage, and that is that it's a detailed account or biography of the life of the Prophet, وسلم, right? Yeah. So this, this particular round for everybody is going to be a little bit easier on Sira, so ho hopefully you guys can get through this one, inshallah. So next team, Sunnah squad, the year the Prophet ﷺ was born is also called this. What is the year called? The year of the elephant. That is correct. All right. All right. Muflihat. How did the Prophet ﷺ earn his living as a young man? See, these are all easy, so hopefully you can get these. Inshallah. He used to be a shepherd and also did business. Yes, he was a shepherd. That, that is correct. Good job. All right. So fasting dudes, how did the Prophet ﷺ get Zayd bin Haritha as a servant. How did he get him? So Zayd's parents, like their tribes were both fought each other. So one time Zayd's uh, mamu, like his uh, mom's family basically took him away and then sold him to slavery because to get back his dad's family because it was a Nanyal versus Dadiyal thing. And then... <laughs> 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 And then, uh, and then 
he, and then th this is how he was ended up sold into slavery to the Prophet ﷺ. And that was the answer to your question. Huh? It was a gift from Khadija. Uh, yeah, that too. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we should take away credit for saying too much. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Should we say five? Okay, partial. Partial. You want to say because what we have is that uh, it he was actually gifted uh, from Khadija, radiallahu but after the marriage, did he say that? Did he say that? No, no. But you are the leader. You are the one who put the seat, right? Well, he took the mic. Uh, <laughs> name? Are you part of the team, or you are? Part yes. Of the <laughs> who, who is your spokesperson moving forward? Uh, let's just have one. Yeah. Well, we did say that in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. But should we give it? I did not hear that. Harris is say, he, did he say that in the? He did. Okay. okay. We'll uh, give some credit to Harris for that one. So we'll give you credit for that. All right. All right, moving along. Guys, if we can have side conversations. Guys, guys, side conversations to minimum. Okay, Muqarrabeen. The year Khadija radiallahu anha and Abu Talib died is called this. What is the year called? The year of sorrow. That is correct. correct. All right. A quick announcement. There's a generous brother that just told me to double the prizes for the competition. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. So that means um, first place, one thousand dollars. And second place, I think six hundred. And third place. 500. All right. So first place would be a thousand. Second place, six hundred. And third place, 200. Ooh, the stakes are getting high now, right? All right. Competition thickens. The All right, if we could have silence, please. Where were we? Okay, which team were we on? Okay, Tullab al Ilm. The Prophet وسلم, traveled to Ta'if to invite this tribe to Islam. What was the name of the tribe? Banu Thaqif? We couldn't hear you. Banu Thaqif? Sorry to disappoint Shaitan, but that is correct! <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Doing good. Okay. Mohsineen. <laughs> At the conquest of Mecca, what did the Prophet وسلم, tell the group? of terrified people who had gathered around him. At the conquest of Mecca, what did the Prophet ﷺ tell them? Uh, he said what Yusuf ﷺ said to his brothers. He said, لا تثيب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وهو أرحم الراحمين. That is correct. <laughs> Excellent. All right, brownies. <laughs> Where was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam buried? After. He was buried in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, which is now in uh, the Masjid Nabawi. Absolutely correct. All right. Muslimun. All right. What did the Prophet ﷺ do twice with Jibreel in the last year of his life? Reciting the Qur'an, the entire Qur'an? Twice. That's, yeah. that's correct. Excellent. All right, good job.
Uh, okay, there is a, a correction uh, adjustment. Talab uh, al-ilm, when they answered, uh, they gave their answer about anzala and nazala. Uh, they did say that revelation, uh, which is, of course, one of the meanings. Uh, the only thing they didn't say, the difference between the two. So we'll give them five points for that. A partial correct answer. Yep. <laughs> Better than okay. zero. Yep. Now we, are, we come to the next round and uh, we begin with hijabi heroes. Uh, name two other women besides Halima as Saadiya radiallahu anha who suckled our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, the first one is Thueba. Three seconds. And Khawat. Oh, what about the last one? I heard the yeah. Thueba. And what else? Khawat. Khawla. Yeah, it should be Khawla. Yes, that is correct. I mean, you are not pronouncing the name correctly, but. but close uh, enough, yes. Thueba and Khawla. Bint al Mundir, that is the correct answer. <laughs> Where? Uh, yeah, Sunnah Squad. Sunnah Squad. In what cemetery is Khadija radiallahu anha buried? Nine seconds. It was during um, the boycott in the valley where the boycott was happening. That's where she passed away, outside of Mecca. No. no. Uh, that is not the correct answer. The correct answer is Jannatul uh, Al Mu'alla. And this is in Mecca. In Mecca. Yeah. The next question to Muflihat. Name the polytheist, the mushrik, who was the Prophet Sallallahu travel guide during the Hijrah. Yeah, this round for everybody is going to be slightly harder, right? So. <laughs> Ten seconds. Three, two, one. J okay. something. <laughs> it starts with so, a J. Okay, sorry you missed uh, the answer. Uh, the answer is Abdullah ibn Arqat. <laughs> Next question to fasting dudes. Okay, silence please. Silence. Shh. The Prophet wasallam said, there is no hijra after this. What is it? Oh, yeah. um, the conquest of Mecca is the point where you can't do a hijra. What is it? Conquest he said conquest, yes. Conquest of Mecca, yes. That is the correct answer. He said... <laughs> He said, La hijrata ba'd al fath. Next question to Muqarrabeen. The Prophet Sallallahu first stop in the Hijrah was this place, not Medina. Masjid al Quba. Masjid al Quba. 
Okay, we will accept the answer, but the masjid was not there. He Sorry, built the Kuba, masjid yes. once yeah. it yeah. arrived in Quba. We will accept that answer. Okay. All right, sum up. Tulab al ilm. Name the three main Jewish tribes who lived in Medina when the Prophet ﷺ arrived there. Banu Nazir. Banu Nazir. Banu Qaynuqa. Banu Qurayza. Uh, can you say that again? Banu Nazir. Banu Qurayza. Banu Qaynuqa. Okay, that is the correct answer. Yes. Mohsineen, the land in Medina. Guys, quiet, uh, please. Uh, brothers, if <laughs> I know you enjoy talking to each other, but this is really creating disturbance. We cannot continue this, uh, this program. So please, be patient. The land in Medina, the Prophet ﷺ purchased and built his masjid on, belonged to these. Who were they? Nine seconds. Um, he purchased the land from two orphans. That's the final answer. Two orphans or no. workers? What, what, is, what are he you saying? Workers. Two workers. He said, he two, said orphans. two orphans. Two workers. Okay. No. Orphans. Huh? Okay. You said orphans. Uh, is that right? I mean, no, no. <laughs> yes. let's be honest. No, I, I said, what no. did you what say? What did you honestly I say? Said, I said hear from the it. first, yeah. Yes. You, what? You what said, did they say? We can't hear you. Orphans. You did? They did? Okay, okay. Orphans? Okay, so that is the correct answer. Yes. They were two brothers, Sahel and Suhail. Okay, cold brownies. The night. Oh, okay. huh? No, no, full. They got full. Did you give them full? Yeah, yeah, that's full. Full credit. Huh? No, no, we, we didn't ask for that. Yeah, it was just who. who? Are we ready, uh, cold brownies? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. The okay. night the Prophet ﷺ fell ill, which took his, eventually took his life, he asked Abu Muwayhiba to take him to the Jannatul Baqiyah cemetery. Why? The night the Prophet ﷺ fell ill in his final illness, he asked a freedman named Abu Muwayhiba to take him. He to went to see the buried people there to visit them. What was that? He said he went to see the buried people. Visit. Visit the buried people. No. Uh, not just visit. لقد نهيتكم عن زيارة القبور ألا فزوروها. Is that about the answer? No. That is not the context here. Uh, he went there to pray because Allah asked him to pray for the shuhada of Uhad yeah. and all the other shuhada in general. Uh, yeah. But visit, yes, he did visit. So I will grant you five marks for that. Five points. Uh, Muslimun. Number 45. Who was the chief? Who was the chief negotiator for Quraysh when discussing the Treaty of Hudaybiyah? From the Quraysh side, who was the chief negotiator?
Suhail ibn Amr? That is the correct answer. Okay, so the next round for hijabi heroes. Name two reasons why the Quraysh representative initially refused to accept the wording of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah document. Um, because it started with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and then it also um, declared that the Prophet Sallallahu was a prophet. That is the correct answer. <laughs> Sunnah Squad. According, According to the Quran, in which battles? Did Allah send angels to support the Prophet ﷺ? Mention at least two. Two battles. Two battles. Badr and Khandaq. Badr and? Khandaq. Khandaq. That is the correct answer. <laughs> Muflihat. Hunain was another one. Yeah. And the others were uh, Hunain. Hunain. Uh, yeah, the, the other was Hunain. Uh, Muflihat, what was the last, the very last military campaign of the Prophet وسلم, which he himself Part participated. participated in? The Battle of Tabuk. The Battle of Tabuk or the ex <coughs> expedition of Tabuk because the battle didn't happen. Uh, that is the correct answer. Oh. Fasting dudes. In the battle of Uhud, in the battle of Uhud, about whom did the Prophet ﷺ say, May my parents be ransomed for you? Fidaka Ummi wa Abi. Ten seconds. Saad ibn Abi Waqqas. What is it? Saad ibn Abi Waqqas. That is the correct answer. Saad ibn Abi Waqqas. Good Muqarrabin. guess. Good guess. <laughs> Muqarrabin. Name three rulers to whom the Prophet ﷺ invited to Islam after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Ten seconds. Uh, sorry, uh, the time no, is I was, over. N n I, I was ready. I was just saying Najashi and uh, Heraclius and the uh, No, we Egypt. can't take all your answers after the 30 seconds have passed, I, right? I mean, it, ha it has to be fair to everybody, right? You started after the time had run everybody? out. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. No. Oh, the only one he had was Najashi, and that wasn't correct anyway. The only thing he said was Najashi. He did yeah. get Najashi. Yeah. Right. So, but that was the okay. only one. Okay. I concede this much, <clears throat> that you started saying Najashi when it was 30th second, and Najashi was one of the persons the Prophet ﷺ had also invited uh, to Islam. He eventually did become a Muslim. Uh, so, uh, no, but not this. It's the three rulers to whom the Prophet ﷺ invited to Islam after Hudaybiyah. So, so, yes, so Najashi was before that. 
uh, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. The three people he invited were Khusru, the Persian emperor, Heraclius, the Roman emperor, and Maqaqis, the Egyptian ruler who had sent Maria Qiptia to the Prophet ﷺ, from whom he had Ibrahim salam. So we are sorry we cannot award any, any points. Uh, we move on to Tulabul Ilm. What was the Prophet Sallallahu's next military campaign after the conquest of Mecca? Tabuk. Is that the final answer? Okay, so you have already given your answer. Uh, time is over. And that was, Tabuk was the last expedition. The next was Hunayn. He went to Hunayn against Hawazin. Okay, uh, Mohsinin. When Khusru, the Persian emperor, tore up the Prophet Sallallahu's letter, what did the Prophet Sallallahu say? Ten seconds. You got mad? <laughs> Did he say? Okay, no. so the time is over. The Prophet ﷺ said, May Allah tear up your kingdom. And sure enough, Khusru was killed after that. Code Brownies, what was the last dua of the Prophet ﷺ? as he left this world. You can say this in Arabic or you can give me the translation. Ten seconds. He made dua for his ummah. Uh, to not be divided? Okay, so uh, the, his dua was that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Oh Allah, forgive me, have mercy upon me, and join me with the companionship on high. Ila Rafiq al These were his last words, and his hand dropped in the, in, in the bucket. Okay. Uh, Mus Muslim, Muslimin, Muslimun. Muslimun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're ready. Name the companion who bathed the body of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam and mention at least two who assisted him. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given ghusl, the companion who gave the ghusl and the two other mm -hmm. people who assisted him. <coughs> Could you repeat the question, please? Yes, of course. So, yeah. name the person who, who bathed the Prophet ﷺ, uh, his, his body, and two other people who assisted this person. No. No. Um, we'll say Ali, Zayd bin Haritha, and uh, Osama bin Zayd. Okay, so it's partially correct. Uh, the main yes. person who bathed the Prophet ﷺ with his clothes on was Ali radiallahu anh, And he was assisted by Al-Abbas, his uncle, uh, Al-Fadl ibn Al-Abbas, uh, Khutham bin Al-Abbas, Osama bin Zayd. You said Osama bin Zayd as well? Okay, so, th so you get full points, okay. Great. Great. Okay, guys, guys. Easy, easy, all right. Otherwise, we have to call technical fouls here. Huh? 
This was six rounds. Six rounds. Alhamdulillah. All right, let's, let's settle down, please. Silence, please. Let's give a big round of applause so far for everybody. Alhamdulillah. All right, we're going to be moving on to the next category, which relates to Jibreel alayhi salam. So if we could please have silence. Team Hijabi Heroes, what other names has the Quran used for Jibreel alayhi salam, meaning other than Jibreel? Give three other examples for Jibreel's name from the Quran. Nine seconds. Um, Rasulun Kareem. Yeah. Time is up. Rasulun Kareem. So that, that one is correct, but we asked for three. So we'll give them half credit. Half credit on that one. Others to let you know Ar Ruh, Ruh al Amin, Ruh al Qudus, Ruhana Shadid al Quwa. Dhu Mirra, you mentioned Rasul and Kareem, Dhi Quwwatin Inda Dil Arsh Makin, Muta'in Thamma Ameen. So there are many others as well. Thank you. All right, Sunnah Squad. So continuing along, Jibreel alayhi salam, how often does the Quran mention him by name? How often is he mentioned by name? Twice? Uh, that is not correct. It's three times. Twice in Surah Baqarah and once uh, in Surah Tahrim, uh, verse 4. So that is not correct. Uh, next team, Muflihat. When was Jibreel alayhi salam created according to an authentic hadith? He was the first creation with life that was living he, after the pen. He was the first creation, you before, said after the pen? Yeah, before the heavens and the earth were created, he was the first creation before that was actually earth. living. That is uh, close enough, yes. The hadith, <laughs> yes. The hadith in Tirmidhi says that Allah created Jibreel before he created paradise and hell. All right, so fasting dudes, can you cite proof from the Quran, meaning a verse or portion of, the, of a verse from the Quran, that other angels obey Jibreel alayhi salam? Proof that other angels obey Jibreel. Ten seconds. My so. guess would be La Yasun Allah Ma Amrahum Wayafalun Maymarun. No, unfortunately that's not correct. It's e even easier in Surah Takweer, Muta'in Thamma Ameen. Right? Muta'in means to obey. Uh, yes, obeyed by the angels. All right. Uh Mukarrabeen. Where does Jibreel alayhi salam live? Beneath the arsh of Allah. That is correct. Good job. All right, Talab al Ilm. Moving along. On which two occasions did the Prophet وسلم, see Jibreel in his complete angelic form? Two occasions. In, uh, near the low tree in his journey of Isra al Mi'raj. Okay. And when, uh, when the first revelation was revealed, Iqra. Say the second one again. The when, when, when the... 
Yeah, and Surah Al-Iqra when it was revealed. And then Surah Iqra. Qumfa and when the the ayah relating to Qumfa and Dir. We'll give half credit. Then uh, the re reason being that uh, the uh, Jibril al Islam did not appear to him in the cave in his angelic f full angelic form. Um, this was after that when the Prophet ﷺ was confused as to what was happening to him and he looked up on the horizon and he saw Jibreel filling the entire horizon. Uh, that was what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in, and you can mention the surahs. Uh, that, uh, yeah. And then uh, you mentioned the other one, عند السدرة المنتهى عندها جنة المأوى. But, uh, so we'll give half credit on that. All right, Muhsineen, uh, right? How did Jibreel alayhi salam destroy the people of Prophet Lut alayhi salam? How did he destroy them? Uh, he used one of his uh, 600 wings. He, he took it from the bottom could, and he flipped it. Could you speak it. up a little bit? Yeah, yes, I got he used one of his 600 wings. He put the wing under the town, I guess, and then he flipped it. That is correct. Excellent. All right, cold brownies. Name three incidents in which Jibreel alayhi salam interacted with Ibrahim alayhi salam. So once when Ibrahim like uh, before he was thrown in the fire, Ibrahim um, Jibreel Islam came to help. And the other one was when um, before they came to Lut Islam, like an entourage of angels, they went to Ibrahim Islam to inform him and Sarah Islam of, of um, the birth of Ishaq Islam. That was cold. Yeah, you got it. Well, that is correct. So just, just for the other people, yeah, so there was the fire incident, the birth of Ismail alayhi salam, birth of Ishaq alayhi salam. You mentioned the interaction with Lut alayhi salam. There were also two others where uh, when uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam was taught how to perform Hajj and Umrah. And then uh, when Hajr al-Aswad was brought from Jannah. So there's quite a few occasions. All right, excellent. So next team, Muslimun. What, did, what role did Jibreel alayhi salam play in the birth of Isa alayhi salam? He blew into the sleeves of Maryam alayhi salam. And also he delivered the news that... You're good, that is correct. All right. All right, hijabi heroes. What was the first time in which Jibreel alayhi salam interacted with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam? The first time. Um, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam was six years old and Jibreel alayhi salam came and um, opened his chest and cleaned his heart with Zamzam. You got it. Yes. Uh -huh. All right, Sunnah squad. Jibreel alayhi salam once brought good news to Khadija radiallahu anha. What was this good news? Um, he told Khadija radiallahu anha that she had a house in paradise of pearls. You got it. That is based on hadith mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. That is correct. Muflihat. When told that an angel came to the Prophet Sallallahu in Cave Hira, what name did Waraka bin Nawfal use for Jibreel alayhi salam? What name did Waraka use for Jibreel alayhi salam?
He said it was the same angel that came to Isa alayhi salam. No, no, we said, what is the name? He actually used a name. No, time, no, time is up. He used the word anamus, which uh, scholars say it means the keeper of a good secret. Uh, okay. Uh, because he also said in addition. So we'll give you five points because he also said that it is the same angel which came to Musa, but he named him as Namus, uh, not Jibril. It's, but referring to the same person. All right. So half credit on that. Fasting dudes. After the Prophet Sallallahu death, does Jibreel السلام, ever come to the earth? Support your answer from the Quran. Um, he only comes once a year during Laylatul Qadr and the ayah is Tanazil Malaikat wa Gruhu fiha bimi rabbi min kulli amr. That is correct, mashallah. All right, moving to team Muqarrabeen. What verse of the Quran tells us that we will see Jibreel alayhi salam on judgment day? What verse tells us that we will see him on judgment day? The verse, I just know the part of it. Can I say that? Or do you need the whole verse? Because if, if you know part, you can go with it. Sofa, waji, uh, uh, the, where the angels will be uh, standing in the ranks. Um, I'm not getting the whole verse. I don't know if that's, is that right? What do you mean? Half? No. He said waji. Uh, it's actually the one in Surah Naba, verse 38. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ الصَّفَّةِ You mentioned the other ones about the Saf, so yeah. uh, in another so Saf and Safa, but it, it was actually this one, but we'll give you half credit, inshallah. All right. All right. طُلَّابَ uh, العلم. How would the Prophet wasallam sometimes honor Jibreel salam in his ruku' and sujood? He would say, Subbuhun Qudusun, Rabbul Malaikat, Warruh. That is correct. Excellent. Subbuhun Qudus, Rabbul Malaikat, Warruh. Okay, uh, Muhsineen. There was a time when Jibreel alayhi salam found the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam sick. How did he make ruqya for him? Yeah, you can say part of it or uh, whatever you know of it. Nine seconds. Oh, he recited Quran. Uh, no, that is not correct. But a good, good guess. <laughs> uh, in this particular case, it's the ruqya mentioned in Sahih Muslim. Bismillahi arqiq min kulli shay'in yu'dhiq min sharri kulli nafsin aw aynin hasid. So even if you had said Bismillah arqiq, we would have accepted, but that's not correct, unfortunately. All right. Uh, cold brownies. According to the Quran, how many angels will carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on judgment day? Support your Eight. answer from the Quran. Sorry? So what's your final answer? It's eight. Eight. That is correct. That's correct. And that's in Surah al haqqa That is correct. All right. Muslimun. The Prophet وسلم, once asked Jibreel alayhi salam, what prevents you from visiting me more? What was Jibreel's answer as recorded in the Quran? He asked him, why do you not visit me more? What was his answer? It was in Surah Al-Maryam, illa bi amri rabbik. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll, where it's 
1973. No, I did. They just had. Where are they? Yeah, so let's discuss. Uh, two? Yeah. Each round is taking about seven minutes. So, and it's worth it. You want to finish your account? Because you have to wrap them also, right? To prepare for. And then we might have some, some tiebreakers also. Oh, yeah, there might be tiebreak. So we will ask one more round, and at the end of the next round, we will see if there are tie. Tiebreakers. Tie, so we have to ask tiebreaker uh, questions after that. So okay, where will you start from? Yes, spiritual heart. So now we come to the segment uh, about the spiritual heart. This was one of the subjects, and the first question is to hijabi heroes. What okay, have silence, please. There's too much come on. Guys, if we could have, have a quiet down, please. What three names does the Quran use for the heart? Um, Kalb, um, Sudur. Um, okay, just those two. So you said Kalb and Sudur. Yes. Uh, that uh, you didn't give us the third one, correct? Okay. All right. So the third one is Fuad. Afida is the plural. Sadr, Sudur, Kalb, Qulub. So we'll give you the full marks because it's uh, two-thirds correct. Two, we're generous today. <laughs> so nice squad. What is the literal or linguistic meaning of qalb in English? The literal or linguistic meaning of qalb in English? Something that turns or flips. Something that? Turns or flips. Turns and flips. That is correct. <laughs> Muflihat, what was the Prophet Sallallahu most frequent dua concerning the heart or that involved the heart? The Prophet Sallallahu most frequent dua. Ya Ya muqallibul qulub sabbit qalbi ala deenik. That is the correct answer. <laughs> to fasting dudes, next time you guys have just one name. Just fasting or it saves time, okay? Can you cite two verses that include the word sadr or sudur? The first one is Alladhi Yuswi Sufi Sudur al Nas. Oh, um, in Surat al Nahl, Wala Giman Shah Habi Kufi Sadron Farahim Ghadabu Minullah. That is correct. And another, <laughs> another one is Innahu Ali Mum Bizati Sudur. And Alam Nashrah too. Alam Nashrah like a sadr. Yeah. Yes, Alam Nashrah like a sadrak. Muqarrabeen, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Musa alayhi salam to go to Fir'aun, he prayed to Allah to do this to his sadr. What did he say? Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa ahlul uqdutam min That is a correct answer. So, Tullab al-ilm, the Quran says those who bring this type of qalb will enter paradise. What is it? Uh, that is the correct answer. Mohsenin, uh, recite the ayah that says doing this brings tranquility to the hearts.
ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب؟ ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب؟ That is the correct answer. Cold Brown is recite a verse that says, "Shaitan whispers in the sudur of people." الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس. That is the correct answer. The last question in this round, and we will take a stock of where we are. To Muslimun, recite the du'a about the heart that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala teaches us in Surah Al Imran. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنَ الْدُّنْكَ رَحْمَةً رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا That is fortunately the correct answer. All right. So, so brother Harris is saying we can do maybe one more round. Yes. We want to go one more round. Yeah, we have. We're still good. So. So these, these okay, we'll do one more. Yeah, just the yeah, 82. Okay, guys, if, if we could please have silence. We're going to do one more round, and then if there's any other tiebreakers. How did just said? No. He said two. <laughs> they are winning, so they want to stop it. Yeah, in the beginning we had said nine rounds, and then time depending. Okay, so one last round. This uh, will be inshallah. quick. It'll be quick. I'll be quick, uh, and it all depends on you. If you are quiet, and inshallah, we move forward quickly. Um, to hijabi heroes, how is. No. What up? There may still be. Yeah. Mm. Nine points. Nine points. He wants more. Oh no no no! There have been nine rounds. Eighty-one questions. So nine times nine, eighty-one. So this is. As you can see, this is truly epic, you know. <laughs> I, I had the quiz in sexy messages a week ago. <laughs> uh, Alhamdulillah, it was a smooth sailing. All right. All right, Harris, yeah. Harris, let's you tell us what, what you want us do to do. Do you want to close now? Or tiebreaker? No, no, we, we don't need to. Yeah. All right, okay. so we're going to go with one more round. These are slightly harder questions, so this should start to Hijabi differentiate heroes. people. How is fu'ad, the word fu'ad, different from qalb? Uh, in meaning, so what kind of heart is a qalb and what kind of heart is a fu'ad, even though it's referring to the same physical heart? What is the difference? What's the difference? Ten seconds. Um, Fu'al is something that turns over. I oh, don't know. No, sorry. Qalb is, so, is something that turns. Um, and Fu'al is something that does not turn. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you five points. Uh, Fu'ad, Fu'ad is a heart that has emotions of various kinds. Uh, like wa asbaha fuadu umm Musa fariga, ma kazab al fuadu maraa. The Prophet is, uh, you know, in awe of what he's seeing in Miraj. Okay, next question.
The Quran says, uh, this is to uh, Sunnah squad, the Quran says, it is not the eyes that turn blind, but the hearts in the chest that turn blind. Can you recite the verse? Can you speak up a little, please? Yeah. إنها لا تعمل أبصار ولكن تعمل القلوب التي في الصدور. Okay, uh, I'll give you some extended time. Uh, I could not hear you. What is it? And please do not change the answer. You restate what you said earlier. إنها لا تعمل أبصار ولكن تعمل القلوب التي في الصدور. That is the correct answer. The Quran says, Muflihad, the Quran says in Surah Baqarah that some people's hearts had become hard like rock, even harder. Who were they? The people of Bani Israel. That is the correct answer. <laughs> Fasting dudes, recite the portion of the Quranic verse that says Jibreel السلام, revealed the Quran on the Prophet Sallallahu heart. It is Surah Baqarah. قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًا لِجِبْرِيلَ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَلَهُ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ بِيدْنَ اللَّهِ مُصَدِقَ لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَهُدًا وَبُشْرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That is the correct answer. مُقَرَّبِينَ مُقَرَّبِينَ Recite the portion of the Quranic verse that tells disbelievers have hearts with which they fail to understand eyes that do not see and ears that do not hear. Masha Allah, Masha Allah. That is the correct answer. Talab al ilm. Talab al ilm. Recite the portion of the Quranic verse. That tells us that some hearts have a spiritual disease and Allah, Allah allows that disease to increase. That is the correct answer. Mohsineen, recite the portion of the Quranic verse that tells us Allah guides the hearts of believers when they experience calamity. Seconds. Sorry, the time Time's is up. up. We don't know. The verse is Ma asaba min musibatin illa bi idni lahi wa may yum min billahi yahdi kalba wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. Cold brownies. Recite the portion of the verse from Surah Al-Anfal that tells us Allah brought together the hearts of the believers among the Muhajirun and Ansar. That is the correct answer. Yes. Correct. Let's go with this one. This is the back. 
Alors, on oublie Ok, to Muslimoun, on Judgment Day, Allah will remove this from the hearts of the believers they held against each other. ونزعنا ما في صدورهم من غل إخوانا على السرر متقابلين. ونزعنا ما في صدورهم. That is correct answer. Thank you. So. All right. If we could be quiet for a moment, judges are consulting. Quiet, please. Quiet, we are not done yet. Uh, just give us a few more minutes, inshallah. We're in overtime. So we are going to do a tie, two tiebreaker questions. One to each. Yeah, one each. Uh, to Tolab al Ilm and Sunnah Squad. So we start with Sunnah Squad. Don't do these. Do the okay. Go straight to the yellow or the red. Okay. Uh, red? Okay. And this one and this one. This one? This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Sunai Squad, the question for you is, in Medina, the Prophet ﷺ first stayed with his relative Abu Ayyub al-Ansari from this tribe. Which tribe was it? His mom's tribe, Jurhum. Mom's tribe, Jurhum? Yeah. Is that what she said? Unfortunately, that is not the uh, correct answer. Uh, the tribe was Banu Najjar. Uh, his great grandmother, uh, uh, Salma, in Medina. Say. Anzar has some extra <laughs> answers. Okay. We're going to move to Talab al Ilm. For the third position. Did Jibreel alayhi salam foretell the Prophet sallallahu marriage to Aisha radiallahu anha? Uh, answer yes or no, and if yes, how? Uh, yes, and uh, it was through a dream that he showed the Prophet ﷺ that he's married to Aisha. That is the correct answer. Yes. 
Second is fasting due, third is... You go ahead and start. Uh, so what is it? You, you come over here. Can you come here? Okay, so we still have Muslimun first, and now second, fasting dudes is in second place, and and Tullab al Ilm in third. Right? No other tiebreakers. Don't need to. Right? Okay, that's it. All right. So we'll go ahead and close here, right? Yeah, and we thank them. Yes. Do you want to hear? I'll let you give some closing comments. I have this. Oh, you have that. So, so in closing, I would say what I always say, uh, that all of you are winners tonight. So a round of applause. Give a big round of applause uh, for everybody. Uh, this is not a politically correct uh, a statement, but you indeed are all of you winners because you made the effort and you had the intention to learn the Book of Allah and the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. So may Allah accept it from you, and we thank you for making the time and sitting through this, these long, grueling <laughs> you know, rounds. Uh, and inshallah, if Allah gives us life, we look forward to seeing you again next year. Inshallah, just... Barakallah feekum, right? And Brothers and sisters, one other very important thing, if there's feedback, you know, for us to improve in coming years, please do inform Brother Harith. We'd like your feedback so that we can improve, inshallah, in the future. Barakallahu feekum. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. If all the teams could come to the front office in 20 minutes, there is chocolate for every team. So, if, yeah, the gifts for every team, if you could come by the office in 20 minutes. Also, we need help cleaning up. So if everyone can help with the tables and chairs, that would be great. Assalamu alaikum. If the sisters and the brothers can help us clean up, that would be great. Excuse me, somebody lost their AirPod case. If anybody lost their AirPod case, Gen 1, come to the front.
Assalamu alaikum. All the tables have to go to the multipurpose hall. If we can have some volunteers pick up the tables and move them to the multipurpose hall. And the chairs, we're going to put to the side.